a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the apostles and the believers were in Judea, heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered into my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized by water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift... Than he gave us when, that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for the living God. My soul is thirsting for the living God. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul thirsts for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My soul is thirsting for the living God. O send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. My soul is thirsting for the living God. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. My soul is thirsting for the living God. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the Good Shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. 
The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. So today, these readings seem to point to something that, that for the vast majority of us, we should be rejoicing in. You know, most of us are Gentiles. I'm not vast majority of, of Christians in the world today are Gentiles. They're not ethnically Jewish. And so both the readings today talk about this, this, this uh, or while well, Jesus alludes to it, Peter explicitly sort of is interpreting this and, and figuring this out and, and discovering that the good news is for the Gentiles as well, for us. Uh, Jesus says, I have, I have other sheep also that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. Now, I don't think, certainly speaking to the Pharisees, I don't think they understood that uh, uh, as, as he had to go to the, the good news had to be spread to the, to the Gentiles. I don't know that his apostles understood that at the moment, because Peter, it takes him a while to understand this in, in the reading from Acts of the Apostles, that first reading we have. He goes to, to, um, to Cornelius' house. This, is, uh, this episode is, uh, that he, he's describing it takes place at, at uh, a Roman named Cornelius' house. And, they, and Peter says, he says that the Holy Spirit came upon them just as it did upon us. He goes, here he says, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. The, you know, at first this, this group in, of, of apostles who gather people around them, the first disciples, they're all Jewish. It's the Jewish Messiah, after all, all that they're proclaiming. But Peter recognizes that it's for everyone, after he has this, this vision that he's describing, after he hears the, you know, these, the Spirit prompting him to go to Cornelius' house, after he sees that they receive the Holy Spirit in the same way that he, a Jew, had, had received at the beginning. This, this will prompt the apostles down the road to be able to, to unleash Paul in a sense. You know, Paul, the, the, the former Pharisee who has this conversion, who, who uh, feels called to go to the Gentile world, to, this, to the rest of the Roman world, and to proclaim the good news. They, they authorize this. They give him, you know, they have a council, they discuss this, and they, they authorize this so that he can go and spread the good news. And here we have the the first, the first step towards this, as Peter describes Cornelius' house, and for us, not only do we need to recognize that this, this is a momentous time in the church's history that we're reading about, this, this opening up of the good news to everyone, but it also should prompt us to realize that we are called to bring the good news to everyone, not just to, to the people who are like us, the people we like, not just the, you know, the people who are, uh, who we think um, would make a, 
you know, it would be great if they they could uh, really get uh, more engaged in their faith or something like this. It, it's meant for everyone. For the people we don't like. For the people who, who drive us nuts. Whether they be in our family or in, in our circle of friends and acquaintances. The good news is for everyone. Everyone can receive that Holy Spirit just as the apostles did at the beginning. You know, this didn't just happen 2,000 years ago. They didn't receive that Holy Spirit in some, in, in some way that's different than is available to us today. We can receive that Spirit, and we are called to bring that and help others receive that same Spirit that same spirit that unites us in one flock with one shepherd.